Hi, this is Marcel, and this time I have a tournament report for you. Steve invited five people over, and we decided to have a small six-man, three-round tournament in his basement. The theme Pocalypse dropped on the day just before the tournament would be, and so I had to redo my lists a little bit. I brought my usual Gunbjorn list um, in Krill Company because the Power of Dunia Gunbjorn list I've been playing didn't really work out. Especially not against infantry and with the Krill Company I have access to the Bushwhackers and the uh, Trollkin War Wagon that can do some work against infantry. I also brought my Power of Dunia uh, Doomshaper 2 list. The only difference to my last game is I dropped the Creel Stone to a Min Creel Stone because I had 1.3, that's 4 free points, and um, these 4 points go into uh, Linissa Rissa because we are now allowed to take a minion solo. The lineup of my opponents was uh, Steve with his Sugnar, we also had a Crooks player and a Kador player that might have been on the Mighty Die already. Uh, we had another Trollkin player and also one Circle player. So a pretty diverse lineup and we have the two big bogeymen Crooks and Sugnar in there. So, my initial guess was that one of these two would probably win the tournament. My first game was against Kador, and actually that was the first time I ever played against Kador. I have always dodged all of the Kador players in my recent tournaments, so I have no idea what to expect. My opponent is playing Butcher 1 uh, in his battle group. He has a war dog, ruin, a demolisher, and a juggernaut. I think he's also bringing some iron fan pikemen, some doom reaver swordsmen, and the uh, doom reaver dragoon, and the great bears. I expect everything to be heavily armored. So I pick my Doomshaper 2 list and hope I have enough attacks to deal with this infantry. I win the roll off and decide to go first. On my deployment I put the Mountain King to the right side together with uh, Lanusa and Janissa and the Bouncer. My Mauler and Malk go to the right side. I want to uh, pressure the left zone with my Mountain King and on the right side I should have less problems getting over the wall and through the water because Malk has um, Pathfinder on the charge and the Mauler will probably stay back to hand out rage. The stone and doom shaper go in the middle and I also deploy two webs to the far left and right that I will uh, put into the zones just to contest. My opponent is uh, putting his battle group in the middle right behind the house. He puts his iron fangs to the right so he will probably run them up and try to prevent me scoring in my, in my zone and also shield his flag. To the left side he puts his swordsman and the swordsman dragoon. And off we go. Our uh, scenario is spread the net. So we have two rectangular zones and one round zone in the middle. Also we have one flag to our respective left sides. I start with wild aggression already on Mark because I'm in power of Dunia. And first turn I do what trolls do, I put as much fury as possible into the stone and run everything up as far as possible. My opponent also uh, runs up but takes care to stay out of my threat ranges. On the left side he spreads his swordsman in the 
the rectangular zone on the right side his iron fangs uh, form a shield wall and advance just far enough that I cannot reach them with my mauler or mug and his battle group with uh, the warcaster stay behind the building. I also move everything only up a little bit in the next round. I stay out of the threat ranges of his iron fang on the right. I move the mountain king a little bit up and uh, spray his swordsman to take some out. But I uh, make sure that uh, the mountain king stays out of threat range of his jacks that are parked behind the building. I'm unable to um, contest his rectangular zone or his flag, so I assume he will be scoring next round, but I can contest everything else. I missed one picture. Um, what he does in his turn is his swordsman charge my uh, mountain king and my bouncer. Yeah, Bouncer. His Ulan is charging on the left side of the Mountain King. Janissa is standing, or has been standing out of the picture, and uh, kills her. He moves up his Iron Fang on the right side a little bit more, and um, also his Great Bears. He keeps them still behind the wall, and his Jacks go. Uh, Behind the behind the building in charge range to the Mountain King, who is currently blocked by the swordsman. The swordsman also put a good amount of damage into him, I think, and I will need to heal him up again next round. So everything is in range for me. So this turn is feet turn. On the right side I charge in Malk with Wild Aggression and the Exer to take out almost all of his um, pikemen, which also clears the zone for me. On the left side I put um, Rage on the Mauler and charge him in. He kills one of the heavies. No, he doesn't kill one of the heavies. He uh, puts a lot of damage into Ruin and then throws Ruin at uh, Butcher with his uh, chain attack rapid smash. Good thing Ruin is now out of charge range to the Mountain King and of course he's knocked down. The Bouncer clears uh, a path for the Mountain King by killing most of the Swordsmen. Oh, yeah, Swordsmen they were. And uh, then the Mountain King uh, can move up just far enough so he has uh, the other Jacks in range and punches both of them until they are dead. Luckily, the, the Mauler already put some damage into them. The Stone and Doom Shaper stay behind the building. I'm now controlling the right rectangular zone. I'm contesting his flag and uh, his jacks are out of range to control his rectangular zone. So I think uh, scenario play is off the table now. The only problem I currently have is his Dragoon who is off to the left side, even behind my flag. And um, yeah, he's actually in charge range to Doom Shaper. So I have to camp some fury. Also, um, I'm not sure how much work the Butcher can do, especially against uh, my Mauler that is in charge range to him. I think he could also charge either Malk or the Exa if he wanted to. On his turn, of course, he goes in uh, on Doom Shaper with his Dragoon, charges Doom Shaper. Luckily, the charge attack misses. The second attack uh, puts some damage into Doomy, but he can transfer it off uh, to the Mountain King, I think. 
And yeah, after that, assassination is off the table. So he's uh, trying to kill some stuff uh, to maybe have a chance on scenario the next round. Um, he charges in his great bears on Malk and the remaining pikemen on the Exor on the right side. Uh, isn't able to kill any of them. And on the left side, he uh, charges the butcher at the bouncer, no, at the mauler, and kills him in two swings. That's because he has feed it and everything has an extra die um, due to his feet. So now Butcher is standing right behind the building, which is uh, exactly the right spot for me to end the game. I put uh, Wild Aggression on the Mountain King in my turn, charge the Mountain King at Butcher and hit him until he stops moving. So I think what won me the game uh, are two things. One, I think my opponent underestimated the damage a Mauler can do to his heavies. And also I was pretty fortunate that I was able to clear most of the Mountain King's base with uh, my bouncer so he could advance and kill his other two heavies. So... I won my first game of the tournament and I also won my first game against Kador. Next up is one of the other players that uh, got a win in the first game and the choice is either the other troll player or Steve and his Suknar. And surprise, it's Steve and his Suknar and he's able to join us. Hi Steve. Hello, it's me. So, uh... We talked about this match already beforehand because we each knew what the other was bringing in this. And um, I had to choose uh, between uh, something that can face your striker and something that can face your Nemo. So, yeah. uh, because I think my Gunbjorn list had game into both of these lists. I, of course, chose Gunbjorn and hoped you would choose Nemo so I could completely counter you. Yeah, so uh, Nemo, like just because you had Gumbion in your list, in your pair, meant that I probably was a bad idea to risk it and drop Nemo. Because uh, I was in a similar position with Striker in that he could probably uh, do something against both of your lists. Whereas Nemo would be excellent against um, uh, Doomshaper, but not really, very not good at all against, um, against Gumbion. Although with hindsight, it might have been impossible for me to just uh, weather the storm for a turn or something like that with Nemo. It's just that uh, Gumbion's uh, feet just stops uh, all, of, all of Nemo's list from doing anything, really. Um, so, yeah, so the tournament, I'm not doing back reps for the tournament because I couldn't be bothered to take photos because I'm lazy. So um, my two lists were uh, an updated Nemo list, whereas the new, because the new um, theme forces mean that I can't take Thunderhead with Jakes anymore so I swapped him out for a Centurion with a, a group of mechanics uh, which actually gives me a much stronger um, scenario presence which is quite cool but and this is the striker list which is just after the change to themes as well which means I can take one mercenary solo uh, so it's striker 2 in a sort of a standard striker 2 list uh, with uh, Piper and Piper's great because he gives uh, he gives out concealment to anyone or he gives Pathfinder to anyone and he does something else something like possibly no knockdown or something to someone I can't yeah. remember what the third thing is that he does don't know I only know him for uh, Pathfinder on everything yeah and I think that's exactly what uh, Striker 2 was missing because yeah, we exactly. need to make Striker stronger yeah yeah so he's got um, it makes uh, Striker 2's assassination potential much stronger when he's got Pathfinder uh, especially as he doesn't need line because he has a movement spell uh, which he can cast before he does his proper movement it means he can uh, step into a forest slightly and then uh, and then charge onwards through it and he's got a 17 inch uh, threat range which is pretty decent and a lot of the time it's just um, um, a scenario tool because it means uh, keeping casters out of zones um, but anyway that's the list I went for and it's uh, two units of storm lances a unit of storm blades Got a journeyman in there with a firefly on, 
and I've got Rowdy and Esquire and a Lancer for uh, uh, for Striker. And I think that's more or less it. Oh, I've got Lattimore in there as well. Uh, this is yeah, because... post-change Stormlances. I'm not going to say nerf because I don't think they got nerfed that badly, really. Yeah, they, they lost some infantry clearing, but they got some more armor cracking. Yes, yeah, which is pretty decent, especially for Signar. Infantry clearing is not really a big problem for us. Uh, yeah, armor cracking is really all day. Yeah, so, yeah, because Gunbjorn would have shut this uh, Nemo list down, then I went for the Striker list. And yep. unfortunately, this is the first time I've played this list ever in its form in Mark III. I played a couple of Mark III games with Striker 2 before, but not this exact list. Um, so I did have some experience with him, but not. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm uh, up to speed with him just yet. Yeah, I think I won the roll off, judging by the images, because yeah. I went first. Because why wouldn't I? I'm a troll. I always want to go first. Yeah. And uh, deployment-wise, I kept uh, my stone and uh, Gunbjorn uh, where I could maybe move behind the house or uh, on the hill, whatever I wanted to. And the Mountain King and the War Wagon go to the left side because I had them stuck behind the building and behind the building in so many games. I mm. wanted to avoid this this yeah. time. The um, bomber and the swamp troll will try to hold the other side, and I also put my um, bushwhacker there, but only after I saw your deployment and uh, chose to try to kill uh, some storm lances on that flank. Okay. Yeah. How was your deployment? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh fairly good because you cho uh, did I choose side I think I gave myself the most open side yes um, because partly because I wanted to uh, give you trouble with your huge bases there uh, which you already talked about and um, I need I'd like to have some maneuverability with my storm lances so the whole list can pretty much redeploy uh, if I need to so I can sort of spread out like I did and I can change sides or do whatever I want in my first turn. Um, other than that, it's a pretty standard deployment for me. Uh, I can't see the whole table here. Uh, so Striker is set up, yeah, he's set up um, sort of close to the forests because of the aforementioned uh, Pathfinder. He doesn't worry too much about that. He's got, he's got Rowdy next to him because he likes to be in base contact with Rowdy. Um, yeah, and I'm just flanking with storm lances and everything else in the middle. So the storm blades uh, got uh, enough space to run up and not crowd out the storm lances because I had to drop the storm blade captain from this list to fit in the piper. Uh, so that means that I'm not allowed to just move everyone through everyone anymore. So I have to be a bit more careful about where I'm expecting things to uh, end up. And yeah, really just giving one unit of storm lances to take on the bushwhackers and one unit to uh, team up with the storm blades and uh, take on the Mountain King and the uh, and the Battle Wagon. Oh, that's it, pretty much. Yeah. Um, first turn for me was pretty straightforward. Everything uh, moves up as far as possible. I get my bomber a bit stuck behind my bushwhackers, but that's not a problem because I expect your storm lances to run or charge in anyways. On the other side, I think I get a lucky deviation from the War Wagon and kill some of your... Um, Storm blades, and that's basically it. I have snipe put out, and uh, everything else is dropped into the stone by Gunbjorn. Yeah, you took down two storm blades, I think, early on, which is pretty good. Um, they're not insignificant. Uh, taking out storm blades isn't insignificant because they uh, hit so hard, and uh, taking out one or two can mean the difference between a dead heavy or or not. Um, so yeah, my first turn is just, again, just running up. I'm just trying to stay outside of your charge ranges, which I've managed to do, I think, pretty much. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to stay outside of your shooting range because uh, then I just lose on scenario on the next turn. Um, put up deceleration to give everyone a bit of extra armor against your shooting. Um, on the, over on the right-hand side there, you can see that I ran up one of my Storm Lancers to um, interfere with your uh, combined melee. Uh, combined range attack from the bushwhackers um, and uh, everyone else is just skirting the zones like I said just outside of uh, melee range uh, charge ranges for everyone yeah 
um, yeah, what you forgot on with your with your installments that you ran in. Uh, was this special order that the bushwhackers get uh, slip away, which means they can just move out of um, melee range, which they do on uh, my turn and try to shoot your storm lances, which does not work out at all because they have way too high armor. Um, so one of them is dead. One of yeah, I, I managed to take down one of them. I think two more are a little bit hurt, and I also used the bomber for that. So. Um, I actually had to activate my heavy and my 20-point unit to kill one Stormlands and hurt the other ones a little bit. The Bushwhacker unit, uh, 20 points? The Bushwhacker unit is 15 points plus 5 points unit attachment, but I get that for free in this theme force. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find something else to use instead of them because I just can't play them. I don't get uh, their points worth back. <laughs> Um, yeah, on the left side, I try to interfere with your storm lances. The uh, war wagon tries to hit them and knock them down, but he misses and it deviates and kills uh, something else, I think. But Doomshaper manages to get a critical devastation on one of them, knocks, the, knocks Gun, uh, it back. Uh, Gunjon. Sorry, Gunjon, not Doomshaper. Wrong list. <laughs> and I think only one of your storm lances on the left side is actually non, not knocked down, so yeah. you will not be getting a charge next turn, which was my, which was my target uh, in this. It's, um, a pretty and huge play actually in this game, uh, because a knockdown storm lance is a useless storm lance, so it's as good as killing them really, uh, because yeah. once they're knocked down, no more charges, less survival. Maybe yeah. it's possible that Piper's last thing is standing people up. If it is, then I'm sad. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was kind of huge because uh, three three down storm lances is a big chunk out of a battle wagon, certainly. Yeah, and maybe a, maybe a uh, mountain king. Yeah, and I I also swap over a snipe to my swamp troll and pull out uh, your firefly because he can pull small and medium bases. Uh, the lance, them. Yeah. lance is dead already. Uh, Can't see him on oh no! Right, right. It was the lancer. It wasn't the. It wasn't the firefly. Yeah. It was the lancer. Um, yeah, he pulls it in, and the um, the mountain king just uh, yeah, casually smashes it into the ground with uh, two hits. I think I That's just right. boosted everything, so I would would hit, and then I put in uh, put out a put out a death uh, a kill shot into uh, your storm lances, but I don't think I hit very much. It's like oh yeah, and, uh, fear, also yeah. feet, so I don't get the I don't get uh, too many shots next turn. Yeah, so on the uh, armor cracking side, like the storm blades and storm lances, will always uh, chip away a bit of damage on those heavies uh, with their shooting before actually doing their charge attacks. So yeah, it's not it's not a useless feat in this matchup. Um. <laughs> Go on. And I think that's it, what yeah. I did this turn. And so, yeah, I was very sad about my Storm Lances. That really cripples them. It's a, lot, a big problem. And also all the Storm Blades are well out of their charge range from all your stuff over on the left-hand side. So that was pretty game-deciding, I think, that knockdown effect. Uh, the idea is to do a, do a Storm Lance charge, and then while you're dealing with those, then uh, have the Storm Blade ready to come in with a second uh, wave, or maybe doing the... Um, Maybe doing the feat with me with um, with striker so that uh, they all get their extra attacks and um, if I was lucky I'd be able to take down the uh, battle wagon and I guess maybe the mountain king as well I didn't really think it through maybe not the mountain king I don't know uh, a bit more successful over on the right hand side all the almost all the bushwhackers are dead and I've got the uh, bomber is tied up so he won't be shooting on his next turn and finally I've got striker. Uh, parked in between those two forests, pretty close to the middle, and uh, he's got Rowdy in base contact. So what I'm hoping is is that you're not going to spot that I'll be able to charge Gunbjorn on the following turn, and uh, hopefully that means I'll be able to assassinate you, regardless of what happens with the attrition on the following turn. Um, but it doesn't look good for on attrition for me. I've got the like I said, I've got Storm Lances over on the right hand side, and there's still four of them alive, but two of them will be dead after your uh, bomber has dealt with them. Uh, which will only lead two who could, I guess, creep round and maybe try and take out your stone uh, on the t turn after the next turn. Um, what else? 
yeah, the Lancer going down wasn't critical, but uh, wasn't great, I guess. And yeah, just generally the attrition doesn't look great at this moment. Uh, yeah, I was pretty sad that you basically obliterated my whole unit of uh, bushwhackers on the right side. I expected that I would take some casualties, but I completely forgot that you still had your ellipse on uh, the melee attacks. Um, so, yeah, no wonder that nothing survived there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, on my turn, I decided I need to go in with my war wagon. Uh, because next round I think I could not deny you a charge like I did before. Um, yeah, so I charged into uh, your into your uh, backline of storm blades, and I killed I think quite some stuff with them. Um, I think one of the storm lances is uh, gone after the charge, and also most of the most of the uh, guys on the on the hill next to the stormlands. Looks like Lavender is knocked down as well. Yeah. Um, I oh yeah, the Lavender is knocked down, so she probably got the shot from the Pounder cannon. And yeah, I moved the I moved the uh, Swamp Troll a little bit back because he still has snipe on him and uh, put rage on him, so he single handedly killed uh, your Firefly. I uh, wasn't sure if you had so many elites left here, but I wanted to be sure that this one is gone. And apart from your caster and old Rowdy, I think uh, my Mountain King is now pretty safe. Yeah. And yeah, on the right hand side, as you said, two of your uh, storm lances are dead. I killed one in melee and one with a kill shot from the bomber. And yeah, Gunbjorn just stays on the hill. Uh, he's camping one because you're completely right. I didn't see that assassination coming. <laughs> yeah, well, this is part of what makes Striker so powerful is that he can assassinate. Uh, since worked through the um, assassination likelihood, and it actually wasn't that likely. I think it was only like a 40% chance. Uh, but yeah, I went for it anyway because I was pretty desperate at this point. You've, uh, you've won the attrition game. Uh, the only thing I've got left that can take out the Mountain King or the Battle Wagon. Or did I? I think I took out, maybe did I take out the Battle Wagon with you, my Storm Blades? Oh, you yeah, because I took out the Battle the Wagon under feet, yeah. That's right. So yeah, I feated, uh, I rolled, uh, I already had a bit of damage on Striker from an earlier shot. So I was too scared to roll a three dice uh, overcharge. So I rolled a two dice, I got a six, I think. So that put me on power 21, which is sort of fine. Uh, so I kind of okay. Uh, and then I charged in Striker. So I did a little spell to um, get him just into the forest. And then that gave him also line of sight to uh, Gumbion. <laughs> and his charge was enough to get him into base contact. And, uh, yeah, I just completely failed to hit anything. Um, so my initial uh, charge was a fail to hit. And then I think I maybe hit one other out of my uh, out of my attacks. But at that yeah, point I was trying to hit. one attack, and I took it because I thought it's four damage, and I only have one transfer. I can afford taking four damage. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, I was needing eight to hit at that point anyway. Uh, so I was just spending... I should have um, been boosting to, dam uh, to hit and doing it that way, but I was just spending my uh, focus to uh, buy more attacks because at the time I thought that was a good idea, but it wasn't. Um, and yeah, because um, I feated also to get an extra attack, uh, which also didn't hit, I don't think. Uh, but because I feated, I was able to uh, take down the battle wagon with the uh, storm blades. Storm blades with striker two are really good. I would probably consider getting a second unit to replace one of the units of storm lances, maybe a bit down the line. I will have to see about that. And yeah, Rowdy's charged into the uh, Mountain King purely to tie it up uh, to try and stop the Mountain King from being able to kill striker automatically. Uh, as revenge for my attempt at, uh, on, on Gunbjorn. And Lattimore's in there just to uh, get in the way as well. So, yeah, pretty sad at this point. I don't think there's any way I can win unless for some reason you manage not to kill Striker with Gunbjorn. Uh, but actually, the way State is at the moment, he's got Arcane Shield to his armor 19. His defense is 16, but you can bring his defense down a bit, I think, somehow. Uh, no, actually, 
definitely not. No. Um, no. And uh, so, actually, all you need to do with Gunbjorn is probably boost to hit and damage on a, on about three or four attacks, and you can probably kill him off. Um, I can't remember what I rolled on my on my damage roll for my overcharge, but I think it left me on very few boxes. Yeah, I think you you took you took uh, six boxes, I think, from a kill shot from the Mountain King because you were in range. Oh, yeah. And after that, you took I think seven or eight more uh, with your overcharge. Mm -hmm. And you, I think, you're left on four or five boxes some, somewhere around there. So yeah, you forced me into a desperate situation, and I acted, but it didn't work out. It wasn't a likely assassination, especially when you're camping a fury. Um, so I would have been very lucky to pull it off. But um, yeah, so that was that, really. You uh, basically took me down on the, on the attrition pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I was thinking about after this was how should I kill you? And um, I basically went through the moves and tried with a stone unit first because I wanted to have uh, stone strength on everything. And after that, activated Gunbjorn. And I think he took you out with... Uh, The, the second hit yeah somewhere around there and um, after that if, if he wouldn't uh, would still not have managed to kill you I would have moved in the swamp troll behind your back um, probably have given him rage with the mountain king and tried it with him yeah yeah that's uh, pretty reasonable I think so I actually won two games and I'm on the final table And surprise, the final table is Trolls against Trolls. Or to put it in the words of our Crux player, Nerf Trolls, Trolls OP. My opponent has either a Borka 1 list with a Glacier King or a Doom Shaper list with lots of beasts. And as he expects to crack lots of armor against me, he's of course taking Doom Shaper. I take the same approach, I will probably need a lot of armor cracking, so also, I also take Doom Shaper and we have a match Doom Shaper 2 against Doom Shaper 3. He's bringing the Rune Bearer, a max stone unit, two bombers, a mauler, Mark the Ancient, Lanissa Rissel, a unit of Swamp Gobabello's crew, and I think I think that's it. Oh no, I forgot his exa. Our scenario is a standoff. Both of us chose the stockpile objective. I'm not sure anymore. And uh, he wins the roll-off and decides to go first. His battle group goes right in the middle of the board. Doom Shaper to the left side, so he will probably try to hide him behind that building and his Swamp Gobabello's crew is on the right I notice so he will probably try to score in uh, the right zone. I'm putting my Mountain King on the right side because I don't want to get him stuck behind the building. He's uh, taking the Bouncer and the Exer on the same side. Uh, Mark and the Mauler go to the left side where the building is and yeah the rest goes in the middle i put janissa far out on the right side because i want to try to rock hammer the swamp gobbers before they can score any points on his turn he just runs everything up as far as possible and does little else important thing that small snippet of paper right behind mark reads admonition so As soon as I charge him, he will just go away and I won't be able to kill him. I also move everything up. The Mauler and uh, Mike go into position to charge his left bomber if he moves forward a little bit. The Mountain King uh, also gets into position so he can uh, look on uh, the left side of the forest and charge whatever he puts further forward. And Janissa stays out of reach of the bomber and uh, gets ready to attack the Swamp Gobber crew the next round. Of course my opponent knows that I will get the Alpha Strike on him. So what he does in his turn is feed at first. 
So all the damage I will be doing um, will also heal d3 plus 3 after each hit. Then he's taking some shots with his bombers at my creel stone and at uh, the mauler on the left side. The hit on the creel stone is shield guarded by the bouncer and he does very little else in this turn. I'm debating on whether to go in or not because uh, d3 plus 3 healing after each of my hits is a lot. It's basically plus 5 armor. Only if I do less than 5 damage he will actually heal up. But if I do not go in I will probably get at least uh, the bomber and the Andre uh, mark charged at my king which will kill him and um, probably also some more stuff on the other side so I quickly calculate then I notice I don't uh, really know how this will be going and I say what should happen I will just go in Mark still has wild aggression so I start on that side my um, Mauler puts Rage on Mark. Uh, luckily, his bomber moved far enough up, uh, far enough up to be in charge range of Mark. Uh, I charge the bomber. I kill him. I'm also able to kill his Lenissa after I overtake for one inch, and. Uh, with my final fury I put uh, some damage on his objective. I hoped I would kill it so I can overtake further and actually engage his mauler, but that did not work out. So now Mark is standing just outside of two inches of the mauler and the mauler is free to uh, charge into the Mountain King. So. I have to get some use of the Mountain King now. So I uh, move Janissa up and put Hunter's Mark on his uh, mark. And um, after that I debate on whether to feed or not. But actually I do not have any use for the feed after this turn. So uh, Doom Shaper activates next. He puts Rage on the Mountain King and Rage on the Exer. And then he feeds. Uh, luckily I remember that there is still Admonition on his Mark. So my Rune Bearer moves forward just within 10 inches of Mark and casts Hexblast to remove Admonition. And after that, my Exer charges his Bomber. Because I want to at least get some use out of the Exer this turn, and maybe I can damage the Bomber enough that uh, the Mountain King can put the final damage into him. Uh, my opponent immediately spawns a Whelp. And I think, oh, yeah, you forgot about something. He has two units of whelps. One of uh, them is not spawned at all. And if I keep hitting him, he will block the charge lane to Mark. So I immediately stop attacking him, activate the Mountain King, and charge him in. Mark doesn't have admonition anymore, so he cannot walk away. And I just barely kill him. So I'm on... Uh, Pow 23 under stone uh, with rage and he's on armor 21 and healing d3 plus 3 after each of my hits. I think I spike a bit so I managed to kill him and I don't have anything f uh, or left over to put into the bomber. My opponent is in a little bit of a bind because I just started scoring. Um, I scored one point in my rectangular zone. Uh, he didn't score anything in his zone because Mark is standing there. Oh yeah, and what I forgot, uh, the plan uh, went as I had planned and Janissa 
killed the Swamp Gobber crew, so he doesn't have his two point unit left to score the round zone. Uh, the second part of the bind is that he doesn't have enough damage left to kill both Mark and my Mountain King. He would need his Mauler to kill Mark and he needs the Mauler and the Bomber to kill the Mountain King, according to his estimations. And if he doesn't kill Mark, then Mark will kill his Mauler next round. So uh, he finds a way to still achieve that. Um, he puts out Stranglehold on Mark with uh, Doomshaper and as I said the Mauler is just out of uh, 2 inches so Mark can not attack next round. He needs to forfeit either movement or attacks and uh, he is free to use both his Mauler and his Bomber to kill my Mountain King. He actually needs both of them. And um, yeah, as you can see in the picture, I am spawning whelps like crazy. So I think at this point we have a combined number of 13 whelps on the table. At the end of this turn I lost my Mountain King and um, yeah, just still looking pretty good for me. I have two lights and two heavies left. He has two lights and two heavies left. But it's my turn and I have a way to kill his mauler. Because um, if I forfeit movement with Mark, I can attack his objective. And after I attack his objective with my two initials, and killed it, I score a point and I get a 1 inch overtake move which puts me right into the back arc of his mauler. So with the remaining uh, 4 attacks that I can buy I kill his mauler and then overtake into the direction of his um, caster attachment uh, Skaldi Bonehammer, who is standing there, is actually the Puck uh, that is carrying the scrolls for Dumi 3. On the other side, I uh, put Rage up on my Exer and my Bouncer, and they go into the Bomber. They don't manage to kill him, but he will probably have a hard time uh, getting rid of both of the lights and. I still have a mark in his face now. So I pass my turn, I score another point and I'm now at 3-0 if I calculated that correctly. Actually I'm at 4-0 because I scored on my turn, on his turn, on my turn and I killed his objective. So this turn he either needs to kill me or somehow score a point or contest my zone because otherwise I will go to 5 points. He manages to take out... Uh, some, no, he doesn't take out my bouncer. He's still standing there. Um, he's actually throwing my bouncer uh, away at my caster. He's knocking both of them down but he doesn't have any follow-up to uh, put more damage into Doom Shaper. He tries to get rid of Mark uh, with both the Exer and uh, Doom Shaper 3, but uh, judging by the picture, Doom Shaper 3 got a retaliatory strike from Mark and got smashed because he's standing way back. And even if he had killed Mark, I don't think he had enough attacks left to kill all of the whelps that are contesting his zone. So, after his turn, I score another point, I uh, go to 5, he is still at 0, and I won the third game in a row, and my first small tournament. So, in retrospect, I am starting to get the hang of my Doom Shaper 2 list. It plays very straightforward, it's... Yeah, just peace trading or getting a ridiculous alpha strike. 
and I think I will keep playing him for a bit, at least until I uh, got Doom Shaper 3 and painted him. My Gunbjorn list, I don't know. Uh, I'm starting to get some wins with it, but somehow it looks a little bit uh, one-dimensional because it's yeah lots of shooting and um, most of the time I'm somehow trying to find an assassination angle or trying to not get assassinated by my opponent because I'm spending all of my fury every turn on all kinds of stuff that I need to spend it on. I'm thinking about uh, moving to Madrag 1 as soon as Privateer Press finally manages to get the Northkin CRD out. Because I think with uh, his new uh, design he might actually be a pretty fun caster. So, my question to you, what would you pair the Doom Shaper 2 list with? Either this one with a Mountain King or one without a Mountain King and uh, four heavies. And what ridiculous mistakes uh, did I do this time that I did not notice? Please put everything uh, you want to tell me into the comments below. Thank you for listening and hopefully I'll see you next time.